Today I'm going to show you how to make a plan to build a model railroad based on the prototype. Okay, we're going to go ahead and plan out the Chicago Northwestern Marsh Line sub. So I know what you're thinking. Didn't we make a track plan prior to? Well, we did, and I even started building that track plan. But it was a little too complicated for me, and ultimately when I revisited the plan, after I hadn't worked on the layout that much, it really wasn't what I wanted. I think one thing that derails the process of building a model railroad is, a man's got to know his limitations. As model railroaders, there are things that limit us all. Time, space, and money are what I like to call the holy trinity of model railroading constraints, basically limit us all on everything that we want to do in model railroading. So let's make a new plan. Two things that we're going to need to do to make that happen is we're going to need to review our Givens and Druthers worksheet. Givens and Druthers is just a fancy way of saying the things that I need to have on this railroad versus the things that I want to have on this railroad. So we're going to review that and then once we get that ironed out, we'll start drawing up a plan and I'll show you how I did that. So I got a Givens and Druthers form from bobstrackplan.com and I went ahead and filled this out back when I did my first rendition of the Marsh Line. So thinking back to what I had jotted down here, um, not much had changed. I still wanted to do the Chicago Northwestern Marsh Line subdivision and um, still the same region in the Midwest and basically didn't want to have super long freight cars and I wanted to keep the trains to a modest length, so to anywhere between 10 to 12 cars. I really wanted to have wide aisles, and I wanted to make sure that um, my radii was wide enough so, you know, I, could, I wouldn't have trains kind of pinching as they went around corners. So I carried on with the Dis, or I carried on with the Givens and Druthers here to the construction piece of it for the layout. And when I originally had filled this out, I thought that the multi-deck construction and helixes were not going to be a problem for me. But as it turns out, when I started building this, I did a lot of this by myself. And it was time consuming and at some points kind of confusing for me and took a lot of thought and consternation. Um, so... I kind of changed my tune here and said, I think I just want a single deck layout. As far as track work was concerned, the complexity wasn't an issue either. But then after looking at the prototype and the track diagram for the marsh line, I realized that I really didn't have much in the way of complex track work. So that wasn't going to be a problem anyway, but just wanted to write it out and say, hey, no problem. As I continued with the questionnaire, it talked about operating priorities and to pick the top six out of about 15 different priorities here. And the number one and two were medium length freights and local freight. Um, junctions were also a big thing for me, but the other items such as yard switching, engine terminal, long freight trains, they didn't they're not um, my priority of things that I want to achieve with this layout. So I went and started to look at the scene, scenery versus track work versus mainline length. And from looking at my answers, and I still think they hold true today, I'd like to err on the side of scenery. I want the model railroad to kind of come alive with really detailed and ornate scenery with trains that are coming through on on a stage basically to kind of play out a scene um, and as far as mainline versus mainline running versus switching i like to do switching and the marsh line was pretty much a local job um, that that switched out a bunch of industries um, out in the countryside so Mainline running through trains are fun, but I'm, I really like switching. 
So after I took a look at Bob's track plans, Givens and Druthers sheet, I wanted to dive in a little deeper. So I made my own Microsoft Excel Givens and Druthers sheet and copied some of the things that Bob had on his sheet. But I wanted to look at the prototype elements and started, I wanted to start with the towns themselves. So I laid out all 19 station stops on the Chicago Northwestern Marsh Line sub and I started to prioritize them and did 1 through 19 on there and wanted to pick my top four for this layout. So back then when I did the first rendition, West Rosendale, Ripon, Rosendale, and El Dorado were my top four towns. When I redid my town priority, Ripon, West Rosendale, Rosendale, and El Dorado were my top four towns. Nothing had changed. Um, I still want to model these towns, and I think it, it it's where I grew up, and I really wanted to capture you know, what the marsh line was like for me when I was a kid. I also looked at the different scenes in those towns that I really wanted to capture, and again, pro uh, laid them all out and prioritized them, and all of the scenes that I want to capture reside in the towns that I want to model. So I know it's kind of self-serving, but at the same token, it's it, it really instills the layout that I want to build. So I have my towns and I have my scenes that I want to uh, model. So how are we going to do this? So now that I have the towns and the scenes um, laid out, I wanted to put a prototype operation to it. So I started digging through some of my timetables that I had for the Marsh Line. And I found this timetable from 1986 that captures the Marsh Line just the way I want it and just the way I remember it. It has the four towns that I was talking about. And it it's set in the time that I grew up in, which is in the 80s. and as far as I'm concerned, that's I want to capture the railroad in its dying days. Um, the, and that's really the railroad that I remember when I was a kid. So now that we've figured out the what and when, we better start drawing that prototypical track plan. So how did I do this? Um, I'll take a look at my first um, town that I'm going to model, which is El Dorado. And we're going to look at some um, authorizations for expenditures, or as they call an AFE, which I picked up from the Chicago Northwestern Historical Society. And as you can see, uh, El Dorado basically has a siding on the north side of the main line and a spur on the south and west part of the main line. The two industries that were served here was a feed mill on the east side and a fertilizer plant on the west side. The types of loads that were brought in were anhydrous, ammonia, and granular fertilizer. And feed mill uh, dropped off grain and uh, loaded out stuff on boxcars. So it has some diversity in terms of switching. And it's a nice little uh, stop for a small eight-car train to drop some cars and pick some cars up. So now that we've kind of taken a look at how we're going to, or what the actual track plan looked like here, um, we should probably talk about how I'm going to build this, this layout. So this layout, it's going to be four towns, and I'm going to build it one module at a time, or one section at a time. And I aim to keep, it, keep the building section small and super detailed, so that way I stay engaged. And lastly, we're going to build this to the FREMO standard for the branch line. So that means code 70 rail and 36-inch um, radii. So I'm going to show you my plan that I drew up in the program AnyRail. And as you can see, we've got the siding here on the north side of town, and we've got the spur in the southwest. And you can see basically how the county highway cuts the module in half 
and and it kind of shows you the different types of uh, structures that we're going to be having on here. So it's the feed mill with a couple of grain bins and the fertilizer plant with some anhydrous tanks sitting there on the side. So that's, uh, that's our track plan and that's kind of how we transferred all of this prototypical information into, um, into a, a track plan that we're going to be building. So that's how we designed the uh, prototypical track plan for El Dorado, which is going to be town one of four for the Chicago and Northwestern Marsh Line Railroad. So you can see behind me, construction has started for El Dorado based on that track plan that we just put together. If you want to check out another video on the history of the Chicago and Northwestern Marsh Line, the railroad that I'm modeling, Take a look at the video in the upper corner here, and I'll see you over there. I want to thank you guys for watching, and if you have any questions or comments about what I'm doing, please put them in the comment section down below. And again, if this is your first time here, make sure you subscribe so you don't miss any model railroad content. And I just want to leave you with this. Prototype modelers are pretty cool. We throw awesome parties.